Every year, over 3 billion people worldwide play video games of some sort. And of these 3 billion people, 90% of players have had their experience ruined by cheaters or hackers at one point or another. And another 32% admitted to having cheated themselves. Clara. With cheating becoming as big of a problem as it is today, I wanted to look back at where it all started and the history of how we went from harmless cheat codes to hacking for financial gain. To start, we first need to go back to 1981 and the release of a game called Manic Miner. This side-scrolling platformer was the first game ever recorded to include a cheat code. Playtesters didn't like having to beat every other level in order to test the final stages of the game. So to help them, Matthew Smith, the developer, added what he called a cheat mode by typing 6031769 to allow them to teleport to any stage. And so, the cheat code was born. In the same year, a game development company called Sir Tech launched Wizardry Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord and was one of the first D&D roleplay style games ever released for the Apple II. To this day, it's listed on over six different publication lists for one of the best video games of all time. A few months after its release, however, advertisements for, quote, trainers began popping up. Often confused today for mod menus, trainers change the existing code of a game where mod menus add new code and assets. For example, in Minecraft, a trainer could be used to change leather armor to be as strong as diamond. A mod menu, however, could add an armor set that just doesn't break. Being sold for $25, which in 1980 was around $100 today, they promised to let you alter your character stats at any time, as well as rescue your dead allies that were in the dungeons. And being one of the first instances of its kind, Surtech would issue a response to these players, scolding them for succumbing to the temptation of cheating. Unfortunately, I don't think Sir Tech would have been able to predict just how crazy the cheating scene would get. Different cheats and cheat codes over the next few years would become more popular, with one code in particular becoming the most famous to this day, the Konami code. Up, up, down, <laughs> Stop. Getting its popularity for its use in Contra, a run and gun game for the NES released in 1988. The famous inputs were also dubbed the 30 lives code and did exactly that. Gave players 30 lives as well as every power up in the game to make it easier for casual players to still beat it. Though it was popularized from Contra, it was actually created by Kazuhisa Hashimoto for the home port of the NES game Gradius another shooter game released two years prior. And speaking of the NES, some of you may have seen one of these before. Advertised as being video game enhancers to avoid legal trouble, the Game Genie and Action Replay in reality were one of the first ways for people to manually create their own cheat codes in their favorite games, from everything to the NES to the eventual DS. With a little knowledge on how they work, you could plug them in, change some of the code, and you could create cheat codes not intended by the developers. Even I remember these being passed around in school so I could get every Pokemon from all different versions onto my leaf green. By the mid 90s, home consoles and handhelds were all the rage. And in turn, so were cheats. Entire books, magazines, websites, and even a TV show were dedicated to showcasing different cheat codes. One of the biggest magazines, Nintendo Power, sold from 1988 to 2012 and was filled with various tricks, cheats, and reviews from all games, while mainly focused on Nintendo products. They even had a direct phone line for gamers to call for advice on beating any game by professionals. Nintendo Game Playing, this is Rick. How can I help you? Cheat was a TV show on the G4 network centered around you guessed it, cheats. The show aired from 2005 to 2009, and each episode would showcase tips and cheats from different games like Simpsons Hit and Run and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Most of these programs, however, would be shut down by around 2010, 
but for good reason, as the age of the internet would be upon us and change not only video games, but cheating forever. Before the internet, cheating in games was primarily done in single player with cheat codes or on LAN and same console multiplayer games with friends. I hate this fucking game! However, at the same time, single player cheats would start to phase out of a lot of games due to the introduction of achievements, which meant multiplayer cheating would become the new go-to. The first games to have to deal with this epidemic was Quake and the Team Fortress series in the late 90s. Speed hacks, aimbot, wall hacks, ESP, and various mod menus would begin to plague every FPS game on the planet. Games such as Combat Arms, Call of Duty, and Counter-Strike are notorious for having now referred to as hackers invading these games early on, and even to this day. But with cheaters ruining games, came developers trying to ruin their days. Oh fuck, I can't believe you've done this. One of the first instances of a traditional anti-cheat system was made by Tony Ray, a Team Fortress player who was simply fed up with cheaters in his games. And if you've ever played World of Warcraft or RuneScape, a different type of cheating would also plague those games. Botting or macros would become the newest form of cheating in MMOs, allowing players to set up scripts in order for the computer to play for them, giving a significant advantage of progression over players who only played whenever they could. While cheating was becoming more and more frequent in every game, few players, at least that we know about, would try to take this practice to a whole new level. With video games growing in popularity each year since the 80s, Tournaments and dedicated leagues would form to watch the best players in the world compete against each other for cash prizes. And though the concept of doping, match fixing, and conspiracies in any sport wasn't a new concept, when it came to using video game cheats in tournaments was something new entirely. The most famous example of this is with Optic India. At the Extremes Land 2018 finals for CSGO, Nikhil Kumawat, or Optic Forsaken, would be caught using an aimbot at a LAN event. After suspicions arose, the referees would check Forsaken's computer, only to find an out-of-place program cleverly titled Word.exe. After attempting to delete the file, Optic would be disqualified, and Forsaken was handed a ban from all CSGO events by the Esports Integrity Commission for five years. Countless players in the FPS scene have suffered the same fate as Forsaken, but FPS games aren't the only culprits. Super Smash Bros. Melee had one such instance that was unheard of until this point. Chaos, an Ohio Melee player in 2016, was gaining some notoriety for beating high-ranked players with Pichu. If you don't know, Pichu in Melee is deemed a very low tier character, so when Chaos showed up to tournaments using Pichu and was destroying power level players using high tier characters, it must have meant his skill was phenomenal, and he was earning money in the process. However, the community, not so convinced of his skill, downloaded the data of his cartridge, ultimately finding he had hacked his game to give Pichu some insane buffs, like extra kill power and extended hitboxes. Given the fact he would never play friendlies and would only run tournament matches on his setup, it went unnoticed for quite a while. But after doing the research on his dubbed Super Pichu, he was banned, and luckily the Smash scene has yet to see a scandal like this since. For a detailed video on how cheating in Melee works, check out the video in the top left. And with that, we have reached 2023. Though cheating seems to still be a problem we will continue to deal with for years to come, we are still going to play the games we love. While it was once a fun novelty with cheat codes back in the day, we can only hope that one day the cheaters get what they deserve. The aimbot just fucking broke again, man. And we can say goodbye to them forever. But until that day comes, Thanks for watching.